Hello! Today in this video of contextual point I'm going to talk about the smooth muscle contraction and relaxation and the differences between the smooth muscle and skeletal and cardiac muscles. So I'm going to start with a question. What is the hallmark substance for muscle contraction? For skeletal muscle? It is calcium. For cardiac muscle it is calcium. For smooth muscle, it is calcium. So, the all three types of muscle is using calcium for contraction. So, calcium is really important substance for contraction for all type of muscles. And calcium is a second messenger, like cyclic AMP, diacylglycerol, and IP3. Okay, let's start the calcium, uh, sorry, let's start to smooth muscle contraction and relaxation. This smooth muscle cell has L-type calcium channels, calmoduli inside of the cell, and this is the smooth muscle. And when a stimulus comes from the cell, which can be a neurotransmitter or stretch or hormones, the L-type calcium channels activated and the extracellular calcium influx to the cell. This is really important. The, in the smooth muscle contraction, we are using the extracellular calcium and the extracellular calcium comes from the inside of the cell. And when the calcium comes inside the cell, it it makes a complex with calmodulin, and this this name is this name is calcium calmodulin complex. Calcium calmodulin complex has an important feature. It activates myosin light chain kinase. The ca if something has kinase in its name, that means this enzyme will adds phosphate to its substrate. The substrate is, of course, myosin light chain. And this means we will add phosphate to myosin light chain. And uh, these are the illustration of smooth muscle fibers. And I will draw one more smooth muscle. Okay. This is the site of myosin light chain. So, the myosin light chain kinase will add phosphate in here. When we add the phosphate in a myosin light chain, smooth muscle is contracted. Now, uh, I will drop again. Okay, we have a phosphorylated myosin light chain, and this is uh, this smooth muscle is contracted right now. So how it will gonna be relaxed? This pathway starts with nitric oxide. So the stimulus of relaxation is nitric oxide. The nitric oxide comes from the cell, from the outside, from the adjacent tissues, and nitric oxide will increase the cyclic GMP and the increase of cyclic GMP also increase the protein kinase G but also also the increasing of the cyclic GMP directly activates myosin light chain phosphatase and myosin light chain phosphatase will cut off the phosphates from its sub substrate which is the substrate for this enzyme is myosin light chain of course so we will cut the phosphate from the myosin light chain so if we cut this phosphate we are myosin light chain phosphatase this muscle becomes dephosphorylated the smooth muscle becomes dephosphorylated and relaxed so we can say that the contraction occurs via calcium and the relaxation occurs via sodium. And the, the contraction 
the, the car, uh, become a uh, contraction occurs via phosphor phosphorylation and the phosphorylation occurs via the mucin latching kinase and the dephosphorylation caused relaxation and the dephosphorylation caused by mucin latching phosphatase. There is also another important thing in here. The cyclic AMP actually inhibits the mucin light chain kinase. So if cyclic AMP increase in a cell, the mucin light chain kinase inhibited, and the uh, smooth muscle can cell uh, smooth muscles cannot be phosphorylated, and it cannot be contracted. So increasing of cyclic AMP uh, cause the relaxation. This is important to distinguish in smooth muscle cells from the cardiac muscle cells. Okay, let's look at pharmacological relevance. What is the me mechanism of action of milrinone? Milrinone is a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor. The phosphodiesterase normally de uh, degrades the cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP inside the cell. So it will cause decreasing of cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP. But if we give phosphodiesterase inhibitors it will block the phosphodiesterase and when we block the phosphodiesterase via phosphodiesterase inhibitors this will lead to increasing of cyclic AMP inside the cell. So what will happen if cyclic AMP increased in a smooth muscle cell? As I said before cyclic AMP blocks the myosin light chain kinase blocks the myosin light chain kinase. So if you block the myosin light chain kinase, the muscle cannot be phosphorylated, the smooth muscle cannot be phosphorylated, so it couldn't be able to contract, so indirectly it will relax. But there is another important thing in here. This happened in smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. But in cardiac muscles, in cardiac muscles, increasing of cyclic AMP leads to increased calcium. And when calcium increases in a cardiac myocyte, this causes contraction. This is a really important feature for distinguishing smooth muscle cell via cardiac muscle cells. So, in a short, we can say that uh, increasing cyclic AMP causes smooth muscle relaxation, in contrast, causes cardiac m muscle contraction. Okay, we said all types of muscle contract with calcium but the pathways inside of cells differs from other and in this uh, slide the important thing is where the calcium coming from let's look smooth muscle again smooth muscle is stimulated via neurotransmitters hormones ph stretch and etc and this stimulus will cause calcium influx from the extracellular space as I said before so calcium coming from the extracellular space in skeletal muscles the stimulus is acetylcholine and the acetylcholine cause leads opening of dehydropyridine and rhyonidine receptors and this will lead to calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum this is really important the sarcoplasmic reticulum found in the inside of the cell so the calcium releasing and coming to cytosol from the intracellular side of the cell, not from the extracellular space like smooth muscle. So in skeletal muscle, it uses calcium in, uh, from the inside. Let's look cardiac muscle. The stimulus coming from the pacemaker cells, and pacemaker cells cause calcium influx from extracellular space, like smooth muscle, but then it will also lead calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, like skeletal muscle. And we are saying that calcium induced calcium release. So, cardiac muscles use extracellular calcium and also 
intracellular calcium. Actually, the extracellular calcium influx uh, induces the uh, intracellular calcium release. So, in short, smooth muscle cells use extracellular calcium. Skeletal muscle cells use intracellular calcium. Cardiac muscle cells both use both of the extracellular and intracellular calcium. This is really important for distinguishing the types of smooth muscle, uh, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle, and uh, doing questions. And this is the logic underneath the why calcium channel blockers like dehydropyridine and non dehydropyridine calcium channel blockers are not causing, uh, are not blocking the contraction in skeletal muscles because skeletal muscles use intracellular calcium. If we block the uh, membranous calcium channels via calcium channel blockers, this will not make anything for skeletal muscles because skeletal muscle uses intracellular calcium. But in contrast, in smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, uh, calcium channel blockers can affect the smooth muscle and cardiac muscle because they both use extracellular calcium. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy and learn something. And if you like it, please subscribe me. Thanks much.